mm. just like we are going to be discussing i don't encourage people just being interested in a wish list for just one year it should be your your yearly plan should be pulled out of a 10 year or a 20 year or a 30 year plan so that it rolls into your purpose for life so it's not just a one shot kind of wish list you say 2020 well as for 2020 i'll do something and 2021 you don't do anything 2022 you try and do something if your life is like that then you leave your life to become a product of happenstance and if you want to even look at the nations that we call developed nations you notice that they are where they are and they are called wealthy states because where they are today is not just a product of yesterday it's a product of a very long thought and they roll each of them out as and when with or without a particular person from whichever kind of party and i think that should be how our lives are, are run mm. even for companies if you notice for for very good companies multinationals sometime november they probably were trying to look into 2020 which may be a fraction of their 10 year or 20 year plans and everybody wakes up every morning to go to that office to work towards that goal for the year even for political parties i mean the least you see them do is manifestos that cover four years mm -hmm. so they think in a number of years multiple mm -hmm. of years not just one not just one and so when they are given the opportunity to rule they live by that document and that is what we also as citizenry use as a measure of whether they are doing what they say they will do or not and that is what development is about unfortunately for individuals either in the corporate world even in um, senior political positions and ordinary people we live each day at a time and we don't recognize the power of planning we just leave it at the level of institution and that is why even as a nation we may not be running at the pace we are supposed to be so today this mm -hmm. conversation would get everybody from the individual to think like the organizations do so that the product of the organization's success would reflect on the individual lives and business and companies should be interested yeah in the people they employ whether they are also thinking like the organization is thinking so that success is reflected from the micro unit to the macro level across so, so even for an institution you should be concerned that your your employees think in long term you should be because if you have sat on a number of multinational interviews and one of the questions we always ask any emerging leader in the organization is where do you see yourself five years from now why, why do we important? ask that question mm -hmm. we ask that because we want to see whether the future blueprint of that individual is in sync with the organization's picture of their future so when we get that answer of whatever is cooked at the spot of the interview we don't follow through to be sure that that person is aligned to our goals in the future that is why you will be surprised by a turnover that is why you will be surprised by a non-performance by the guy who sp spoke so well at the interview because you are not interested in individuals living the same way as the institution want to live so many many companies went on a retreat sometime in november trying to roll out 2020. how many managers have looked at their employees and 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 made an effort to bring them to that same level of living lifestyle so that they have thought about how they are going to conduct themselves in attitude in values in execution and it is in line with the organization's values when it's not like that you would be living as and when and that doesn't reflect positively on the organization tell me how a picture of a life can look like at the year 2030 if they don't take this conversation in, in, seriously enough right. so if you don't take this conversation seriously what will happen is that you would be a product of another person's thoughts because it's okay if you don't want to plan for 2030 somebody else has a plan for you in 2030 who example you might not have thought about what kind of expense you would want to make on the mobile device you use and what kind of mobile device you'll be using that's okay samsung has thought about you for 2030 so you wake up one morning 2030 and there is a 2030 version of the phone and because you might not have planned about your income levels and the kind of income you need to earn to be able to afford that you probably have to take a loan to 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 buy that phone and so you become a product of their thoughts that is why if you don't become intentionally driven and mm -hmm. look into 10 years from today i think it's john legend who said that um, the future began yesterday and so we are even we are late as we are speaking mm -hmm. so if you are just thinking about this year and even this year which is in its eighth day 
you should know that the years are bundles of time days weeks and things like that and you have no control over them the same way your 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 watch keeps moving that is the same way life moves it doesn't stop for anything and so you've got to pause and crystallize your life in the next 10 years so that it is intentionally driven mm-hmm. it is thought intensive mm-hmm. and then it's action oriented if you don't do that 2030 you will just be a product of another person's thoughts if it's a nation we will be a product of another nation's thoughts so a nation is thinking about 2030 and countries that will need power and support so they are building other other power supply alternative supply um, um, um maybe products now if a nation like ghana is not thinking about that 2030 we may run into challenges we never envisaged mm. and we would have to fall on that country that thought 10 years ahead and become a product of their thoughts mm, mm. so how should we look at it what do we want by 2030 do we want 10 cars do we want five houses what do we want right so that is a good question and this is how if you are listening you should approach it there are specific anchors strategic anchors in any long-term plan that you have to put down as an individual mm-hmm. and i'll run you through those anchors so that you don't also just sit down and write some wish list uh, list and say that is your 2020 goal or 2020 plan so number one is that you must be able to put together a personal purpose statement the okay. anchors of every long-term strategic plan must have a personal purpose statement okay i'll explain that in detail mm. the second thing is that the same long-term plan must have a personal vision statement mm-hmm. the third one is that it must have a top five personal core values so the first anchor is your personal purpose statement the second anchor is your personal vision statement the third one is your top five personal core values and then the fourth one you should have an anchor that talks about strategic focus areas of your life in those 10 years and then the final one will be specific objectives and smart goals that are going to be indicators of whether you are getting there or not so these five critical indicators must be identified ring fenced and you must think about them and put details to them which i'll be talking about Mm. so that in 10 years you know exactly what kind of picture you want to have so you 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 live each day deliberately you live each minute deliberately and even if you are not going to get it 100 percent you get closer and i mean if you don't do this and you still become successful the way you are supposed to be and impact your generation now that, that would be a surprise because mm-hmm. even jesus in luke 14 28 i think expressed a surprise at lives that are not lived without plants so he said is there anybody who decides to go to war and does not first sit down to count the costs so that is like an expression of amazement is there anybody who would want to build a house and does not sit down to count the cost so you are actually a miracle if the last 10 years you did not plan about what you wanted to see in 2020 and you still call yourself successful in 2020 because you don't have any goal post to tell a goal scored or a goal over the bar in 2010 you never saw 2020 when you were in 2010 and so you can't tell me you are successful in 2020 when the picture of 2020 that would define what success looks like for you was defined then and i'm saying that if you can take a good look at what 2030 should be like clearly spell it out it gives you a picture of where you want to get to and when we are talking when we talk about the five strategic anchors and you get to a place like the focus areas where i'll talk about maybe academics maybe finance maybe Mm -hmm. health Mm -hmm. maybe family relationships and things like that you'll be able to tell when i get there that i'm there you'll be able to tell just like if you are traveling to tamale you know you are going to tamale so when you get to tamale even when you have never been to tamale before you are able to find out and ask if this is tamale and when they confirm you are convinced and you are happy that you're in tamale why because that's where you are going this one let's provoke the the thinking of of um our listeners our community this morning and let me ask a simple question it's been close to about 15 to 18 minutes since we began this conversation with richmond only and he has made a very key point about why it is important for you to think about your life in blocks of at least about five or ten years we are looking at the decade 
because a lot of conversation on social media has been about how 2020 starts a new decade and how it's the opportunity for you to look ahead to 2030 and live the life that you want to live first anchor area was the personal, personal purpose, purpose statement, purpose statement. Mm, tell us about right that. so you 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 in designing a 10-year strategic plan for yourself mm -hmm. as an individual you have to understand that there is a reason for everything that exists mm. i mean i want to break it down to the simplest terms if you if you want to pick anything you can see with your eyes mm -hmm. around you mm -hmm. each of them have a reason why they are around you may not know but everything you see has a reason it's for made existence. for something so that's an example really i wanted us to get something to chew on so he wants to start a business a transport business he wants to get a space in the media i believe he, he wants to get a job in the media and um he's already working on his accommodation so that that's a bit of you know in simple terms what how, how does that work in in feeding into right so i mean that's that's statement. okay but when we are talking about strategic and course and we are starting with personal purpose statement mm -hmm. it goes beyond you it goes beyond thinking about the car you drive it goes beyond thinking about um, the house you live in it goes beyond what you eat daily in fact mm -hmm. jesus said that life and here he's talking about the essence of life purpose mm -hmm. does not consist in the abundance of the things you have it's mm -hmm. more that is bigger than that in the next 10 years your life purpose statement has to do with the reason why you are around what would make other people's life better what will make the generation remi remember you for something more than just yourself and your family and your children okay. it, 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 is, it is bigger than what you eat what you wear what what you drive it's bigger than that it is a, a generational influence a value that you are bringing to your generation and i'm saying everybody has been born for that purpose there is a reason why you are here the, the, that that the example of that is when jesus was about starting his ministry and he said the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me too then he began recounting the things he's doing that is bringing value to humanity i'm saying that everybody who is listening to me in designing your purpose statement as the first strategic angle for your life plan it is bigger than just you what do you think you have been endowed with mm. to change the lives of many millions and hundreds of people in the world mm -hmm. so that when you are dead and gone today we can know you for something it is not the house you live in it is not the type of car you drive it is not the phone you are holding your life is bigger than that those things will come subsequently mm -hmm. but your life and the 10 year goal you are building that little business you are running should answer a critical problem the entire generation you are running into and more are facing with so i want a good example of that so that we can capture it well um in in closing this part of the conversation richmond what, what would you say i would say that look for something that affects the generation in the next 10 years mm. and makes the other person living somewhere else who can benefit from your gifting your values your beliefs um become a better person because you are around so anything that makes the world better than you met it that fits into your personal mission statement and when you are able to do that or maybe in a subsequent meeting you will tell you will run people through how to do that when you're able to do that you now can go to putting together a vision document that tells clearly what you want to achieve doing that so that when you achieve your vision it is meeting a purpose it's not just a vision so when i get a house what does it do mm. when i get a car what does it do mm. so if, if your vision is answering the question of the reason why you are around then it's it's bigger than anybody else it is from there that you now can move to values core values that will guide you so you do the right things and then from there you can move to strategic focus areas about your life so now you come to your life and you say the areas are maybe finance and investment the areas are family and relationships the areas are health and keep fit and adventure you break your life into those specific focus areas so your daily routine about your life is feeding into your vision is feeding into your purpose and you're a happy person success will not just be a realization of something you own or something you have but a greater good and then ultimately your goals so your goals become like the roots you are plotting to take each of these success areas that will feed into your greater purpose mm. and then ultimately your daily routine so you notice that your daily routine becomes a function of your future return and so every day you live mm -hmm. you notice that whatever you are doing is leading you to the next 10 years mm. and that next 10 years optimization of your goals is affecting 
society is affecting generations and you become a generational influence instead of just having a wife a car um two kids and then saying that is success success is bigger than that success is bigger than a wife a car and two kids um very very thought-provoking statements there from richmond to come from thank you very much